Uh, I'm Hamid Rashid. Uh, I reside in Malaysia, but I think the last six months I'm not really sure where I reside because kind of moving around so much. Uh, the company itself, Intera Foundation, is registered in six different countries, so kind of moving around in six different uh, spaces and time zones. So kind of lost that. Uh, this is my second visit to uh, Nairobi, Kenya, and kind of already feeling like home. Uh, when I came in, I was able to explain to the taxi driver a way to take me, <laughs> and I was surprised myself, you know, and, and I, I was able to even ask him where to take me for the local food. Uh, so kind of I feel at home already. Um, so I get this goes, you know, as a perk uh, of uh, this job, uh, you know. Um, I have been in this space of uh, blockchain and crypto uh, for last two plus years. The space itself is only about four uh, plus years uh, in mainstream. Um, my, my whole area has been in uh, research and development in technology and for the last 15 or 18 years uh, I've been doing that. I used to do that for Hewlett Packard, HP. Uh, out of Malaysia and Singapore, and uh, I used to run in the division where we used to look at future technologies, research on them, and uh, kind of create pilot uh, technologies and see whether they'll be accepted by the consumers, and then we have the little features coming out in your laptop, in your PC, or in, in your network devices and all. So I used to do that for many, many years, uh, till I decided to go on my own and get involved in this space of blockchain, uh, which I did in 2014. Uh, and since then, I've ran multiple projects on blockchain. I've uh, basically worked on a lot of maybe the top five blockchains. I've worked on them. I have a very large team, a global team, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, comprises of 12 nationalities today and nearly 50 engineers in a single location working on, on this platform. So uh, kind of what I'm doing right now uh, uh, is, is cutting edge, yes. Um, I like this space because it's very dynamic. Uh, but also it holds a very big future potential. And that's what the promise is of, of this space. Um, two years ago, if you would have asked me, or even early last year, if you would have asked me, what's the potential of blockchain? Uh, I think it was still a bit hazy and gray uh, because there were not that many use cases. But if you ask me today, what's the potential of uh, blockchain? It is very bright, actually, because the use cases are coming up for the first time. Uh, and, and surprisingly, very large institutions are adopting blockchain. That do you know that New York Stock Exchange actually runs on blockchain for the last two years? Do you know that Standard Charter Bank money remittances run on the blockchain? On New York the Stock Exchange. Yes, New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> Ripple, uh, so on, uh, uh, you know, uh, Standard Charter has adopted the Ripple network, and the money transfers are done on the Ripple network uh, by Standard Charter. Do you know that Singapore Airlines, the baggage handling, actually runs on a blockchain? So now your bags will not get lost very easily. <laughs> they can track your bags. There are million and one use cases coming up, and, and this is what you know, will bring blockchain to the mainstream. And this is what will give value to the technology. It's very similar you know, in, in the early days of uh, uh, internet. I don't know how many of you remember. Uh, I, I think I'm the old guy here, that in 1999 and 2000, when I graduated and got into a, a, you know IT job, we used to build websites in HTML in basic JavaScript. And we used to think that we are doing such a high-end technology you know, uh, development and all that. And to build a website used to cost companies hundreds of thousands of dollars to build a website. Today, what is HTML? Is, uh, you don't actually need to know. There are tools that you can use to create your website. Website can be created free of charge online you know, with tools like Wix and, and there's so many other tools. So this is where blockchain is today. It is four years old. You know, I think that the, the world development community and the, the enterprise community is trying to understand uh, what it is, and the use cases are coming up. And once the use cases become mainstream, that's when the value of technology will actually start showing. So today we are promoting is a, a, as a technology, and I think one or two years down the road we will be promoting it as a use case, right? So it, it, it's going in that direction. So. My visit, uh, uh, initial visit last month uh, to Nairobi was to present uh, in a conference, uh, uh, was called uh, the World Blockchain Summit Conference, uh, where a lot of the regulators and the technology community was present, and I presented my paper. Um, and, and I got a very uh, positive response from that uh, presentation, where the regulators and the technology community saw that the technology can be used for specific use cases to benefit the country and to benefit the society, okay? 
and, and that's the purpose of coming back this time where uh, I would be meeting the regulators like Securities Commission and Central Bank to present to them how this technology can actually help them uh, in their operations and how it could streamline uh, efficiency and, and also cost cutting. Um, and, and, you know, and some use cases where regulators have adopted in other countries like Singapore, Hong Kong and, and other countries. So it's very important, I think, to share with the regulators not to be afraid of this piece of technology, right? Uh, and in every technology, the early days is, uh, you know, the wild, wild west. Uh, even in the internet space, if you recall, I, I don't know how many of you were using internet in 98 and 99. The early days were the wild, wild west, where internet was purely used for number one, pornography, number two, for chatting, right? So used to chat and look for dates uh, online, and, and fourth was sending emails, right? That was the use case in the early days of internet. But now with, with blockchain, the early use cases were bad use cases, especially in 2016 and early 2017, where ICOs were raised outside the regulation and, and capital was raised outside the Securities Commission. And that's what, I guess, upset the regulators a lot. A uh, lot of money laundering took place, uh, took place because of uh, these kind of activities, because they were outside the regulatory framework. But now that blockchain is getting into the mainstream and regulators are catching up to what it is all about, uh, I think the real serious business use cases are coming up. And Fintera want to be part of that, so we have been working on building this technology, what we are doing uh, for the last six months. Now, a lot of you might say only six months, but in blockchain space, I can tell you, one week is equal to one year. That's the amount of work that we do. Uh, so we are just there for last six months, but our operation and what we are generating in terms of revenue, user base, is equal to a company operating for six plus years. That in this six years, we have, uh, sorry, in this six months, we have a pilot or beta version of the system already up and running. We have already more than 400,000 users on the platform. Okay? Uh, we have operations in six different countries uh, where there are uh, uh, registered entities, offices, and staff base. We have over 50 staff uh, on the project uh, wor working on this. We have multiple investors coming into the project because of the potential of it. We have IPs and patents uh, from the project being registered in Hong Kong, Singapore, and other countries. Um, there is just enormous activities happening which I think a traditional enterprise company would not be able to manage. So I guess this is kind of a startup uh, culture, a startup environment, uh, but blockchain just pushes the, the boundary, the envelope to the edge. So I'm very excited to be here and to present because, uh, you know, uh, Kenya is, uh, in terms of e-money, uh, in terms of IT adoption, is taken as number one uh, in, in the African uh, continent, right? And, and if you look at, the, the, say, the, the M-Pesa uh, case, use case, it is considered number one, right? Recently, there was some presentation in a conference in US, and M-Pesa was used uh, as a role model, as, as a case study, uh, that even in the United States, uh, e-money is not this well uh, uh, accepted as uh, M-Pesa is accepted here in Kenya. Uh, so I think, uh, for me, is I want to go to places where uh, the adoption of technology is already in the mainstream. Uh, I don't need to hard sell what we are doing. Uh, Kenya and the users in Kenya already accept that this technology is beneficial and they are looking for use cases how to use it. And I'm here to show the use case.